Hello everybody. Um, welcome to a, another YouTube um, painting, drawing, sketching tutorial. This is an analysis of a painting that I just sketched, so I'll show my sketch in a bit and we'll um, talk about this painting. This one is by Asher Durand, um, Pastoral Landscape, 1861. I have it oriented in this way. So when I switch it, it doesn't want to minimize it. So um, I'll show it in this fashion and then I'll turn it sideways to zoom in some stuff. So first of all, uh, another Hudson River Valley painter. And it seems very similar to the one that I had done yesterday. I don't have the one yesterday right in front of me. And I have the name with the piece of paper in the other room, unfortunately. but. Uh, once again, a grouping of trees, uh, a water element, then further background element. Then here, there's a plane, and there's even um, there's even a church. There's even some water back in here that looks like a church. Then further, we have more plane. That line probably represents some water back there. Uh, mountainous hill, another layer of hills, and then even further back, I believe that's even more uh, plains going back. So there's just so much depth and layers taking place here. So, um, so once again, uh, trees blocking on either side. Yeah, I noticed um, again, there's kind of a sloping down. So there's that hilly aspect, which I've been seeing a lot of in the Hudson River Valley paintings. And th these are like of locations, so th it is quite hilly over in that region. As I looked at it, I noticed there was like a lot of little different focal points, things to look at. We had the um, cows, which I'm uh, really having a lot of difficulty fathoming how they painted those cows so small. Um, I, I've been just kind of sketching it and I want to carry cows over into my uh, watercolor paintings and oil paintings, but I'm just wondering how they got so much detail in that small, small object. Zooming in, you also see a, um, I guess it's a dam or something back there, a bridge, a lot going on. Here in this region, there is a path, and this is my first time zooming in on the path, and all the way back here we have a building as well. So we had a lot, a lot of little elements just placed throughout this and stuff that you could just look at it for hours and just start finding new and new things within it. So it was quite a little challenging. It was fun. Um, overall, I'm starting to see a lot of patterns with trees and whatnot um, being replicated. The shadows, the darkness in the trees blending into other dark masses. And that's uh, another thing that I want to carry over as well. Also, um, just the subtle details within these trees are very interesting. And once again, very like light sky, light valued sky. Um, so that's a really good carryover and something to keep in mind with uh, painting. Sometimes we really don't need to darken the sky so much. We really don't need to overdo it. So overall, just a fantastic painting. I'm going to show my sketch that I had done of it. And then I'll talk about that for a moment. And then I'll sign off. So a lot of the elements that I just showed you in that painting uh, did not show up in this one. For example, that bridge, that small house, way back in here, that church. Um, but I did put some of the other points in that boat on the river the cows, that path, and I try to get those layers of planes. Uh, with this, my main approach, besides kind of modeling stuff in that time lapse and getting things in place, was literally just um, density of strokes corresponding to distance and value. I tried to do like the minimum amount of strokes here for the farther distance, a little bit build up, horizontal strokes to represent a plane in that area. 
so kind of directional that was taking place. But here we started doing some um, the hook shapes for the trees and I left that really light. They are lighter in the picture than the foreground darks. I tried to do a little bit of build up, but just small gestures just to say, hey, these are trees in here and that's what's taking place. For variety in the reflection, places that I built up, I brought down a little bit darker reflection. Within his painting, he brought down uh, the color values. So there's some greens and um, some kind of earth sienna tones in there. Now, uh, closer to the foreground, I've been doing that hook shape still. I've started to add a cross hatching more and more in order to uh, kind of shade in those darker areas. Contouring this hill where it comes down into kind of a valley. So I did those gestural marks in that direction to allow that swoop to come down. Uh, rocks, just kind of put them in place, uh, darker areas on the side. We had kind of shadows heading over in this direction. And um, try to do a few different face directions on the rocks to kind of just give those uh, sides, the flatter shapes taking place. Put the cows in. Um, like I said, I'm having quite a bit of difficulty with those and trying to figure out how people, those painters are doing them so small. Here I'm just using a fountain pen, by the way. Um, if you're interested in what I used, I use Lorraine Mauve, which is an ink by um, Noodler's Ink. That is a bulletproof ink, a waterproof ink, and people that have done not completely scientific light fast studies have had very little fading with that ink. So I wanted to use a different ink and I used a, um, a different fountain pen, a Noodler's fountain pen that kind of matches that color. Anyway, so that's how I kind of built up the concentration of the darks of the ink. I think that's the darkest I could have potentially gotten. Um, if I would have kept going over it with those hash marks, I'm not sure how much further we could have went. Here, I was having trouble seeing that in the picture, and I had to have the picture right here alongside me in that smaller way, since the turn was making it larger. But I used perspective here. I kind of had to wing this spot to get that perspective line taking place, let it build up in size. So it's kind of a triangular shape leading up to this area. Um, lighter strokes for the lighter trees portions, which is mimicking the lighter strokes back here, but we do get that um, forward push. I'm not quite sure why. It might be its placement. It might be some of the darker values allowing that to come forward. Um, that's something that I need to uh, just think about more and try to figure out why that is taking place. The lighter strokes there it may just be size wise. Anyway, stopping point was very um, interesting. So the eye will stay inside travel back, travel to these spots. Little gestural strokes for um, grass. There's um, little flowers and um, wildflowers and whatnot that seems to be very, um, I guess the word would be pre prevalent within Hudson River Valley paintings or the 1800 paintings where this layer in the foreground has um, a lot of fun little specks and colors and whatnot to kind of model that. Yeah, this corner dark, this corner wasn't as dark, but I started putting that in a little bit. So I feel like that helps frame it as well. Uh, like I said, the sky was very light. There really wasn't much going on in it, but I did a few just little gestural um, clouds and that was just a little very light motion, seeing if I could catch some paint uh, ink onto those spots. So overall, uh, very interesting. Another painting with a, 
drawing with a lot of depth to it um, where I had to kind of use the, the winging knowledge in order to get that perspective and that road taking place, like I said, since it was so dark. I remember gestural marks to get the contours of things. And once again, uh, just to reiterate, lighter strokes, uh, less density for farther distant objects, um, closer, uh, denser strokes, um, darker values to bring things closer. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. And um, hopefully this afternoon I will have another painting for y'all. A um, whole bunch of links down below. Please like, subscribe, follow. If you want to support me on Patreon, I'd really appreciate that. Um, I'm thinking soon I'm going to have to place another order for various papers. And go through paper really quick. Also, if there's any other type of inks that you want me to um, draw with, let me know. I love um, the Noodler's inks and I will praise them from the rooftops like all day long. Um, especially since the, the, some of them have the potential of being light fast, which is really hard to find in fountain pen inks. Uh, so far I know of one, two, maybe three other brands that have at least one ink that's light fast. Well, Noodler's has quite a bit. So anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all soon.